thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many know the Lord is great today? Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. 
David said, I was glad when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord. God is so good and worthy to be praised. We just thank him for his kindness. Thank him for his mercy. In spite of it all, God is still good. Listen to the words of that song, how my soul won't be. Man, I, I long, I long. Love the Lord, it's been good to me. I can't tell it all today, but truly, He has brought me and delivered me and helped me and assisted me in life. Those difficult moments, God has been right there. Many of us have had to face those moments and difficulties only to find the Lord is a present help in the time of trouble. Strength in and of ourselves, we give us. But thank God He does, because we need it. Hope and praise you feel welcome to take advantage of the ministry opportunity here. Uh, we're always doing something, trying to do something to help promote your spiritual growth. That's what it's all about. From Zoom to Bible study to prayer night, it's all designed to help you in your growth. Study is important. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. One thing I'm so impressed and blessed by, when Brother Steve passed, I asked Sister Mandy, could I hold his Bible for a couple days and look through it? And I found this man's Bible. Used. I noticed it one day in Bible study, how marked up and how used it was. But he really made it his life study. And the moment God put his hand on him to know the God who would reach down and bring him into the sheepfold. Mark after mark. Notation after notation. One thing I found in his Bible, Mark on the sheet of scratch paper. His writing was similar to mine. I was impressed by that. But it said, experiences are not evidence. Evidence and experience must line up with the Word of God. That stuck with me. Experiences are not evidence. Evidence and experience must line up with the Word of God. So our experiences must filter through the infallible truth of God's word. I was encouraged by that and many other things that I found in his Bible. When you pass, if your pastor asks for your Bible, would it be marked up? Would it look like you read it? Would it look like you really was embraced? And I see a lot of folks that bring you Bible to church and now we got it on our iPad or phones and stuff. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't care that. He had a page by page Bible. And it looked like he read up and all through that thing. It's marked up. It's huge. If I was to ask, now when people die, I want to see your Bible. I want to see what was really important to you. Better yet, let me see your checking account. See what you invested in. Was it truly in the kingdom or was it in something else? If we could mirror your life and just put it up just like this. It's on the screen. Would it show that you really love God and you really went after Him? You sought to know Him. You gave Him quality time. I'm not talking about a check on Sunday. I went to church, told the Bible, and followed the preacher, didn't fall asleep, didn't chew gum during service, all that kind of stuff. And those things are good. But did you really have a heart to know Him and go after Him? Pursue Him. That was Brother Steve. I was so blessed by Him. I lost my friend. Never be the same, but God, He's a God that takes up the pieces and He helps us move forward. He shows us that. But I truly lost a brother, a brother who would meet on Mondays, pray, sometimes go eat. It looked like an odd couple walking in, eat with those prosthetic legs and those two canes and little jolly me falling behind. I don't know how he would always end up in the lead. He had no legs. He always ended up in the lead. But you can sit down with him, and I don't care who was across, you might as well get ready for it. He's going to ask him something just so he can say something about Jesus. I mean, people over there eating, they're like, hello, I mean, something. And ask him, do you know Jesus? Our waitress, are you saved? One man stood up in memorial and said when Steve was working at a convenience store, he would ask him, are you saved? Because you know your job is a ministry with a paycheck. That's your job. When you're on that mission field, you should show the love. He did that. We're here to aid you and help you, so please share in any opportunity we have, Bible, uh, trivia, or Monday night Zoom. We're going to pick up this.
this Monday, I don't care where I'm going to be at. We're going to do it and share and enjoy Bible trivia, Bible study. It's amazing because last Sunday's message we preached about when it pleases God and how Enoch walked right on out of here. Not knowing Tuesday, midday, our brother was going to walk right on out of here. Wednesday night Bible study literally falls on Lazarus and how God resurrected him from the dead. So I think Brother Steve just kind of fit right in the middle of that and just kind of laid out a path for us to look at and see and the power of God and how he's able to take a man and move him from life to eternity and do it in a graceful way, a passionate way. He left with a lot of peace with my wife, Sister Mandy, came there to him and saw him. He was laying like he was asleep. Skin looked good, his body just fresh. He just laid in his feet. Happy. Joy of the Lord was with him. You be praying for us. Pray for Sister Mandy. Pray for that family. It's not an easy journey. I pray as many of you know what it's like because you have lost loved ones. It's difficult, even more difficult, after we've had a service and served our meal and everybody gone to the ways. Sometimes it really just starts to kick in. So we'll be praying for this underdog and visitor and bombard her with the heart to heart love. One thing Sister Q said to me yesterday that was so great about it, just celebrating them for the efforts they made and thank you as a family, all of you who have done what you have done. She said, This is what families do. And that was just beautiful. That's what we do. We come to each other. We love on each other. We're there when we're hurt. And I thank you for it. And I pray God's blessings upon you for it. Now, ladies, a meeting, a ladies' meeting is uh, June the 12th uh, at 12 noon. So please make it your point to share that we'll be here at 12 noon. Share in that. The Bible trivia questions are the same as what we had last week. We did not get to do them as we to and fro, and I was up visiting my dad. So these are the questions. How long did it take before the rebellious men of war were consumed in the wilderness? How long did it take before those rebellious men of war were consumed in the wilderness? Where else were the Israelites never, what else were the Israelites never to worship? These two were similar in spirit. I think I got two answers on this one. Similar in spirit and power, fearless to claim the word of God and bold enough to rebuke kings. Who were they? These are two people. Similar in spirit and power. I, I think I got her. I tried to get her to squeeze a little hint out of me and she, she pulled my number on her. So, uh, you get what you saw, right? <laughs> and whose birthright was taken away and why? Now, this ain't given away. This is taken away. The difference. So, don't uh, look it up. Look forward to it. Share in it. If you're not a part of Zoom, all I need is your number and an invitation will come your way. And you're welcome to click on and join. And I tell you, it's one of the greatest times of fellowship you will embrace. I want to pray now. I want to pray. We're going to have a time of prayer. You can never pray too much. There is not a person in here without a need of some sort. We're in his care. We're in his care. And truly, he cares for us. And while he is caring for us, the Bible said, cast your cares upon him. Now, it's good when you give your cares to someone that cares. Because you wouldn't waste your time trying to give it to someone that don't. That would make sense. But we know he who never sleeps nor slumbers cares for us all. If he would watch over the sparrow, truly he's going to watch over us. So we come before God and we call out to him. Call out to him for strength we don't have. We call out to him for in and of ourselves we can do nothing, but we know we can do all things through Christ that will strengthen us. Father, we come now thankful for another opportunity to just lay our heart before you. The heart that you say, who can know it but you? The heart that's deceitful and desperately with you. Father, we come before you and ask that you would forgive us any and all things that would separate us from you, that this time of fellowship would be hindered. For your word declares that we draw an iniquity in our heart. You will not hear us. And Lord, the needs, the burden is too great to 
carry on our own. Here I cry, God, from the youngest person to the age one here. We all have needs. Children are hurting. Parents are lonely and sad. Sickness and death have invaded our family. Lord, you saw fit to do your awesome work in our very eyes. And Father, how can we explain you when we don't fully understand you? All your ways searching out, there is no end. But you said, they that wait upon the Lord. Lord, we are trusting in you, in your care, in your care. Father, as we rest in your care, as we stand here today in need of your touch, relationship do not work unless you help. Our children interaction, Lord, won't be what it needs to be without your touch. Life won't have meaning without your direction. Where can we go? You know the way. You direct us. Someone needs direction today. Someone is tired of doing it on their own. Whether it be relationship choice, job, where to go, what to do. We need your direction. Your word, and we believe your word is God breathed. Your word declared that the steps of good men are ordered by the Lord. Oh God, what are our steps? That we might walk up right before you. Give us that sensitivity in the spirit of every day. Father, let it be in this last day hour. Revival. Let it break out. Revival, Lord. Let it spring forth. Let lives be touched. Father, I'm not talking about emotionalism now. I'm not talking about some big name preacher that know how to stir us to give and do. But Lord, I'm talking about that which brings life giving change. That which causes us to move in holiness and obedience to you. That which causes us, Lord, to be able to see clearly the times in which we live. Grant that we as your people in this hour, as critical as it is, have a fine-tuned ear to hear your voice and to know which way to go. We lift up the heart-to-heart family. We lift up the body of Christ, every pastor, every church worker, every minister. Father, I pray that you would call us all to realize we have purpose and place in the kingdom, that you will use us for that purpose and place, and that you will get the glory, you will get the honor. Have your way, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and stand with me. I want to minister to you better than when I started. Better than when I started. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. None of these things move me. Neither count out my life here unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I receive of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. Father, I thank you for the things that have come that has not moved us. Some are here today and things have come their way that try to move them out of the arms of faith safety, out of their positioning with you. And Father, I thank you. These things have not moved them. We stand here today. Lord, there's a dear sister here today. Lord, she is so broken in her trust from the things that have come, but yet they have not moved her. Her faith is intact. Her hope is still in you. She believed in the very God of her salvation. And we stand today in reference of you, God. Things that have come our way have not moved us. Some of you know you've gone through heartbreak. You've gone through broken up relationships. You had more trust that they would do better than what they do and it didn't work. Some of us wanted financial breakthrough by now, but it hasn't moved us. Has some of us went through the pandemic and didn't get sick. And some of us end up sick in the hospital. But it did not move us. We believe and stand on the God of our salvation. And we know that all things work together for the good. To them that love God. So Lord, we desire to be that steadfast and unmovable. Abounding in the work of the Lord. Now pray today, Lord, that I might be able to speak. 
regard to our brother, in regard to us, in regard to your word. Let Jesus be exalted. Give us ear to hear, the heart to receive, and the mind to be at. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. None of these things you may be seeing move you. When he talks about the things, trust me, there's a lot of things happened in the life of Paul. A lot of things went on. A lot of, a lot of attacks. It's faith. You ever had your faith come under attack? While you were trusting and believing God and trying to do the right thing, then all of a sudden something happened that challenges your faith. He said, none of those things move me. How would you like to feel as a preacher? You are preaching, and right while you're preaching, somebody dropped in. That happened to Paul. Man of faith. The man dropped dead, and Paul went down and prayed for the man to raise him up. What do you do if you're preaching and you end up in jail? That happened to Paul. Would you get in jail and say, man, what kind of God is this? He got me here in jail, and I'm doing his will. I'm not supposed to go to jail. He didn't move him. Paul was beat 39 stripes. 40 minus one. Man, you might as well go and give me the other one. More than once. It didn't move him. They threw rocks at him, tried to stone him. God allowed them to throw the rocks at him, and he came up out of the pile of rocks. That means a lot of rocks was thrown, y'all. That didn't move him. He said, I don't even count my life. Now, you know there's something got to be going on with him if he don't even consider his life dearer to himself. Because his life had been on the line. But guess what, y'all? He had given his life to the Lord. And when your life is in his hands, you know not the beginning or the end. You come here, but you don't know when you're going to leave here. You didn't know when you were going to come. And you sure don't know when you're leaving. And check this out. You don't know how you're leaving. All you know is one day I'm leaving. It might be through a doorway by which we would be encouraged. God has a plan. He said, I don't count my life dear unto myself. The reason why is because I've given my life over the Lord. I just want to finish with joy. I want to finish with joy and the ministry, say work. That's what the Greek word there for ministry means. There is a work God has assigned all of us to do. And no matter what are the things that come, you ought to finish that work, that ministry with joy. You ought to finish it Testify the gospel of the Lord. Paul certainly was a testimony of God's goodness. He reached that place in his life where he only wanted to please God. That was a testimony of our brother Steve. None of those things moved him. None of those things got the best of him. Had a heart attack. Lost one leg. Turned around lost the other. It did not move him from his faith. What a remarkable faith when we're not moved by the tragedies that come, and they will come. You are in here, and some of you have suffered tragedy. Some you don't even want to talk about. I'll put both my hands up on that one. And yet I'm not moved. I'm standing here today. And trust me, you got people that are wondering why you're standing. They're wondering why you still got life in you. It's showing because of me. And it ain't because of you. I look to the hills from the cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. While you were looking for me to go down, while you were looking for me to lose my mind, while that little crazy man was walking out thinking you're going to fall apart, God kept me together because he knew he was going to bring Mr. Right one day in your way. While you thought and he thought maybe you were going to fall under the pressure, you knew that all things work together for good. Therefore, you held it all together. Somebody said, Yes, I did. I've been through all them kind of things and some more. I've been broke. I've been destitute. Those things have come, but they have not moved me. Life is the display of God working in and through. A surrendered life brings us to a united identity we call the church. Paul was an embodiment of every aspect of God working in people, bringing them into a purpose greater than 
themselves. A couple of words I love to refer to in Hebrew and in the Greek, and it's the words wrapped around the word people. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, the word people, there's an interesting meaning there. It talks about a people who have a relationship. It's a marvelous working of God and people to develop people in relationship, unified for that one purpose. Somebody say it with glory by him. It does not stop there in the relationship. It goes further because a relationship brings about certain aspects of that relationship that you have to own up to. It's a word we know wrapped around in responsibility. It's a word named louse in 1 Peter chapter 2. It, it, it brings it out. Uh, the Old Testament is Hebrew. New Testament is Greek. There's a Greek word here called louse, like the country in Russia. The Greek word here solidifies a people with a responsibility. Look how it said it. You are a chosen generation, royal priesthood. That gives you a sense of worth. Look at somebody tell you, there's some value on you, honey. Right. Yeah, there's some value in you. You are more than what somebody said. You're more than just what you saw in the mirror. There's some value in you. You are a royal priest. I know they said you got pretty eyes, pretty, you know, 34, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they said all that, but there's more than you in that. And any time some fellow just come looking at that, tell them, say, look, there's more to me than, come on, somebody say, I'm not going to preach wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> 
take care of. Amen? Amen. It didn't disappear with Tawanz and had to start buying formula. No. I was right there. Buying formula. I was there when the smile was going on. Stay when the bills come. Come on. Amen. Can't stand me sorry. Man. And I can't stand these women that put up the he can't have the thrill if he ain't gonna pay the bill. I'm sorry. If he can't pay the bill, he ain't worth it. Oh, man, it's a little raunchy, I know. But, but he can't have no thrill if he ain't gonna pay the bill. And if he ain't willing to pay no bill, ain't gonna be even having no thrill. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. God know what we need to put us in place. But here's my problem. A responsibility. You can't pawn it off on someone else. Your spiritual responsibility. It's your responsibility. That's why I'm upset when I don't see you in church. I got no control at it. That's why I'm upset when your Bible's not being read in you and you're not developing in spiritual growth. It's your responsibility to grow. The Bible says, get the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. What are you growing on? If you're not growing, you're not developing. God wants you to become a people, united, a people, a people from every walk of life. Revelation chapter 5 and 9, the Bible says, He redeemed a people from every tribe, every nation, every tongue. Hear the word people, it's where we get the word ethne, where we get the Latin word ethnos. Where we get the American word ethnic group. We're all people, but we just got different colors, shapes, sizes, ethnicities, sound styles, all of that. We're, but we make one people as the people of God. That's why it's beautiful when we come together. We don't always sing your song, right? Why? Everybody in here like you. Everybody got a need. That's why we sing a little this and a little that. It's everybody here. We all here together. And as much as I might want to hear what I like, I like you enough because we're together. We're going to sing some of what you like. Amen. Hey, when I get to heaven, I don't know what they're doing, but I love them enough to know when I get there, I just want to be in the number. Hallelujah. I just want to make it in. And if they're doing what I do, and I'm doing it a different way, it's all right. As long as I make it in, I'm good. All of this happened in the life of Paul. He became a person in relationship. Out of that relationship, he owned up to his spiritual responsibility. Not knowing what would come. Not knowing that he would suffer physically. Not knowing at the end of his life, he would be a man. For what scholars say, so beaten and bowing, he was barely recognizable. Think about it. Stone, wit. Ostracized, put in prison. And yet here he is, discipling people, church planner, one who would give understanding to so many subjects concerning the faith. Along the journey of faith, we cannot journey without knowing and learning something that he wrote that God gave him. He was so intense in his revelation, my brothers and my sisters, God had to put a thorn in his flesh, a messenger from Satan that buffeted him. He prayed about it earnest. Here's a man that prayed. He raised the dead, but God wouldn't move his thorn. And he made him crafty just so that we can see the power of God in his life. God was in control when Brother Steve lost his legs. One thing about it, that man had more life in him with no legs than I've seen in some of you with both of legs. Amen. He had more praise in him than I've seen some of you who didn't need surgery on his shoulders. I recently found out he had pain in his shoulders. Wouldn't he? But never how they complained. So when he did, you knew it was real and intense. None of that moved him. What's tried to move you lately? Mm -hmm. I know something has. The Satan is about his work. Yeah. Something's tried to move you. Something's whispered in your ear. Where's your God now? Something said, now you got all this going on. How come God ain't there? God. Something's trying to move you. Who can somebody tell me? I'm not going nowhere. I'm 
I'm get out of here, y'all, but I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Paul, church planner, he went through all of that. Disciple, disciple, he gave us Timothy, a bishop in the church who knew how to orchestrate the Christian faith better than anybody else. He had mentored men. He was a man that planted churches, prayed for the churches to develop, and he wants the same for those who has influence to know. Verse 24 of our text again. He said, none of these things move me. Look at this. He said, I don't even count my life dear to me. When I went in to see my brother, he told me, he said, I'm in God's hands. We didn't know. A week later, he would truly be in God's hands. I went up there to encourage him and sometimes heard the flow of what was in him because of that word was encouraged myself. When he passed, I looked at my phone to see what was the last text message I had. The day he fell and had his injury, he sent me a text message that said, great message, Pastor. I hope and pray that God will move you to keep preaching this message until revival break forth in our church. Because we truly prayed and desired to see God move. I remember to read those messages. He sent me songs, passages, but the last message, I believe, had more weight in our relationship than ever before, because both of us carried the weight spiritually in this church and desired to see God move. He would come up here and put pillows on the floor and take those legs off and lay here and cry and cry out to God. He would take the same Bible I have in my office and he would open it up and he would just pray and call out to God. He would call my name and your name and his name and her name and that was a person who did not count their life dear to themselves. I watched him do it with my own eyes laying here in pain and yet crying out that God would move and bring revival in the land and stir us and we can't do no more other than just give them glory, honor and praise and I believe God is going to honor what my brother prayed what his pastor prayed. I believe above all we're able to ask think or imagine I believe that what Paul demonstrated was not just steadfastness in the ministry, little concern for his life, he just wanted to finish it and finish it well look at somebody tell him better than what I started, I know I might have made some mistakes, I know I might have been there and been there but I'm looking to the hills but when coming by my help my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven Direction you need. As long as you 
You're hanging on to it. You can't do nothing. Little as much when you put it in the master's hands. I can't finish this. I'm too old. Somebody needs it.
And I'm going to do it then. If that's you and you're willing to pray, pray with me, Lord Jesus. I have fallen short. And I'm so sorry. But I thank you. You would lead me to repent and pray with the little preacher. Have mercy on me, oh God. Tend unto my brokenness. Heal. Set free. Deliver. Some of you need to struggle is forgiving yourself. Peter had to be restored because he just couldn't forgive himself. I want you to know the goodness of God led you to repent. The reason why I need you to repent because he's willing to accept you. He's willing to give you not just a second chance, but another chance. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Somebody lift your hands and worship and thank you for another chance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have a crown reserved for us, Lord. Thank God for what I drive, but it's not going to matter. I thank God for clothes I have. I thank God. 
shop for a job and I can make money. That's great, but at the end of the day, when it's all over, none of that's going to matter. Only what you do for Christ is going to last. We come as we celebrate the great celebration of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. Passover was given symbolically to Egypt, but it's a type of Christ in theology because the death angel that was sweeping through Egypt passed over the children of God. Why? They had blood on the door. And the Lord said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Christ is our Passover lamb. They were to eat blood up, stay inside. We're called to be on the Lord's side. We're called to stay on his side. Step back to the room. And we are reminded that our bodies, our bodies is the temple of the Lord and that we are to use our bodies for the purposes by which God has prescribed them for. Our our life is an offering, just like the contents of this cup. It's no good unless it's poured out. Jesus was a drink offering for us. So as we come and we partake of the body, we're reminded of his body that suffered for us. But our bodies too, we are called to be a sacrifice for the Lord. On the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and we had given thanks. He broke it. I asked you to remove that bread. And I pray. You're going to break it before you eat it as a symbol that brokenness is not only required, it's necessary. Because out of our brokenness, God uses us. Out of our brokenness, God causes us to be an offering that can be usable in the kingdom, in the lives of people around us. The body of our Lord was subjugated to so much pain. The night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and broke it. And when he gave thanks, he said, take eat, this is my body. It's a reminder to us that our bodies is not ours, but it's the temple of the Lord. And we ought to use it for his purpose. Father, I thank you for your body. Thank you that we as the body of Christ come today to celebrate and embrace what you have done for us. And we receive it with thanksgiving and pray that we would also always be reminded of the awesomeness of who you are. And what you were willing to do for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. We receive with thanksgiving this bread in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. God bless you, we love you. Bless you. 